is rich being easy and you are looking at the dashboard on a 2009 Scion XB and if you notice over here lights flashing it keeps flashing and goes steady uh, which means that the TPS batteries are probably done after 14 nearly 15 years I've let all the air out and this nut is curiously 11 millimeters huh, I just want to loosen it up before I see if I can break the bead oh that's kind of odd I actually had to go tie the lever in catch the bead and push it outwards and come back a second time with this and finally it's off Right, so these drop center tools have helped me keep the tire down. I'll put a third one on on the other side, just to keep the bead in the drop center. I think with a little bit of extra leverage, I should be able to get this TP. So let's spin this nut off. Let's wash it because you don't want it dropping inside. Otherwise, you've got to take the whole tire off. I can do it without <laughs> dropping the whole thing. It's quite long, isn't it? If I turned it, it would probably come out a lot easier, wouldn't it? Here we go, one TPMS unit. This is the TPS unit from the XB. Might be able to make out who actually makes the part there. It looks like just all the other videos I've seen where it pries off the back and there's probably codes in here. If I had to re-register it I'd have to use some of these numbers. Right then, here we go. Just try and pry the back off. I'm going to try and pry it off near this pin. One. Maybe I can pry it off near this other pin. No, there's no way in there. Oh yeah, sounds like it pops over these pins. It's been a little recalcitrant. Oh, that's fun, it just jumped right out. Went right across the room. Great, so it goes that way up. Okay, so it looks like the circuit board is on this side, so the battery's going to be over this side. All I've got to do is start digging out all this silicon seems to be coming out fairly easily. I will continue. I haven't spent that long doing this, but it seems to be coming out quite easily. Okay, so I'm kind of getting there. I noticed in here they've put little hold down tabs in case the battery jumps out. I don't see how that's going to happen. I think the trick is you've got to kind of push them back a bit and then the battery will come out somehow. So what I'm doing is I've gone right next to the tab and I'm prying up and I can hear it breaking free from the RTV on the back side. Okay. So I, I did see in one of the videos there's a technique where you can get underneath this tab, fold it up like that and then roll off the soldered tab, kind of like the same way you do a sardine can. So this one's not working, maybe I need bigger pliers. Because I thought with the um, battery still connected it's probably not good because there's probably some voltage left in them. Oh, one, two. Three, four. Okay, so there were four tiny spot welds I heard pop. Let's see if I can do this side. Oh, yeah, there we go. So underneath the. I've got it lifted. I'm going to have to rotate it. Let's see if that still works on the camera. I think it does. Grab it here. Twist and roll. Oh, 
Not the ramp. Two, three, four. And there's the battery off and out the way, so it can't affect. There's no power going into the unit anymore. So when I'm digging underneath, I can't short circuit it. That's probably important, isn't it? So I'm poking away with the screwdriver, and I think I can hear the RTV starting to yield. There it goes. I think there's a peg back here, right in this black peg, that the circuit board is kind of located on. I'd love to be able to get this off because it will make soldering so much easier. And there it is, and yeah, it's a location pin on the back, and there's a standoff pin right about here. Right, so I'm curious to what voltage is in here. And 2.8687. Well, there's all the components in a row. Now I just have to wait for the new batteries to come in. This is a modification to what I was trying to do on the first one. Um, I'm trying not to lift it so far because this little ta locating tab at the back is actually mushroomed over on the top to hold it, hold the circuit board down. So I'm going to see if I can use this match handle here to just keep it in the air while I desolder the tabs. Well, that actually seemed to work. I uh, desoldered it for a bit and then I just put the soldering gun on top with a pair of long thin pliers underneath and pulled them out. I think I might have to make the holes a little bigger though. Okay, so I didn't get that on tape. Um, I so used this solder braid to suck out as much solder as I could then it ended up it filled the holes. But it did suck off all the solder on the back. So I got out my little Dremel set and I drilled a 1 16th hole through, trimmed the battery tabs just a little bit, and I think I put it in and I've just bent it over and I've not soldered it yet, but the plan is now to just solder those in now that it's, the battery is clipped in. And this is back down and it's still held by that tab at the top here. So what I'm going to do, I've got some Silicon RTV here. I'm going to squeeze a bunch out. That might work. I can hear all the school traffic running around behind me. Now I'm going to dilute it 50-50 with mineral spirits, which was in a suggestion on the web, we're going to find out if that actually works or not. Uh, does that look about 50-50 to you? Yeah. About 40-60. I think it's better than 30-70. Right, let me just stir it. This time it took quite a few minutes of stirring. So. It does eventually dissolve into the mineral spirit and you get a sort of a pourable emulsion. Okay, so I've been stirring for about a minute. Glad you weren't watching, huh? I think that's a pretty good consistency. Now maybe it go a little thinner. Okay, so I think that's a reasonable looking concoction. Yeah, probably too much in. Let's put this one on. Mm. 
Okay, so here's my plan for keeping these closed. This is wax paper. I'm going to put a piece of wood across the top. And I'm going to put my baby sledgehammer on as a weight. See how these are getting on. And if we start, I'll peel them apart. Closer look at them. So how did I do? Well, this one was a little bit askew, but it's it's stuck on there. I think that's gonna fall off. Got a bit spilly with that one. Not gonna peel it off though, it can go in. That one looks pretty good. There's more spillage up here. worked uh, so you've got to be in trip meter A and you turn the ignition on and as you turn the ignition on the button is way down under the dash you have to find it hold it in until all the beeping stops up here then you just sit for a while and it's gone away look at that it should be right there but it's gone <laughs> 